It's nothing to talk about. We just going to get right straight to it. We going to get straight to it because I'm confused. I'm confused. We just going to get straight to it. He said, but one thing he did say, he said, yo, he's a vessel. Though he don't believe or he do believe in God, he, he feels like God is using him as a vessel. And he said he don't look at nothing that he can't get because he's really blessed. You let it out. You was like, so you ever going to get married? And he took it back. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I wasn't always a photographic are memory. Are you? <laughs> not a I'm photographic. Not like most people that are not married is because they're afraid of commitment. It's right. not that like that for me. It's just <clears throat> the whole time I wanted to be married, I... I had kids, so I had to try to fill my wife's place before she got there. So right. I'm already got kids without a mother, but so now I, I got to be doing laundry. I'm, I'm washing dishes. Mm. I'm reading stories. Yeah, I mean, I'm having to nurture. I'm having to do all of this, and I got to the point where I didn't need the wife. I'm doing it, and we're doing it, and I'm not replacing a woman in their lives i'm letting them see that that's just the only thing that we don't have and um it was easier for me to do that because you have to understand that all of the kids i'm raising at this point mm -hmm. they have fathers you see they have a mother you see mm. i'm a different person i'm raising you and so that needs to be done with the other respect for the others that okay. put work in as well. So, yeah, um, I, I never had a problem getting married. I, <clears throat> What's one of the one things you try to teach your kids? I don't teach anybody anything that's over 18. I've done the work I was going to do. But as kids, I really just tried to teach um the things that can be bought, um, your integrity, um, trying to live your life in a way that you yourself could be proud of if you had to look back on it. And um, um, I didn't do very good at leading by example, but behind the scenes, I was, that, that's never what I was pushing. Um, um, they understood that <clears throat> because of my stance, there was a certain thing that would come my way. Mm -hmm. And so accountability and responsibility is part of what you're teaching. Is right. that, you know, even if you're doing the greatest. But but the crazy thing about it is not a lot of people walking around with a, that, that, that can hold their self with accountability. Most people blaming others for their problems. So I'm just saying that that's just how most people are moving. They're blaming others for their problems in the world there's this thing called no good deed goes unpunished yeah like there's a real murphy's law like but basically in raising kids you're just trying to give them a better manual and an outline of how life works than your parents gave you you know right. and so um that's how i did it how do you avoid toxic women Hey, give me, give me, give me. I mean, so, I mean, because obviously, you know, you like women. I do. And I probably like toxic ones more than. God, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. I'll ask you this. Talk your because shit. Because toxic women are exciting. Yeah. And that's just you want that fun. Part of toxic women. You want that fun. Is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather skydive with her. Yeah, you want uh, that fun. But 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 if you have toxic women, just understand that all monsters are feeding off of something. And if you find out what th this toxic woman is feeding off of, you can just begin to turn off her feeding points. Mm. And it drives a toxic person crazy, crazy and they'll get away from you. So whatever if if she's truly toxic, there are certain things that she's doing that help fuel her toxicity. You're not noticing it, but it's what it is. Why do you think she watches murder mysteries before she goes to sleep? Why is it always a crime drama playing? Turn it off. Turn it to cartoons. Is she a little Maybe. odd? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't get to... What's she listening to? You can be listening to Sexy Red. You broke. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
toxic people are trying to get things. They're not being toxic for no reason. They're getting they, they, something. They, they, they on a look. They operate. That's why they operate like that, because they get something. As soon as you find that out, you'll be able to cut off what they're getting, and they will leave. Mm. Yeah. That's an interesting standpoint. You were married once. Never. You were married. Never in life. So would you have a cohabitation agreement? Never. How? How can I be a single parent and be married? You could, two things, you know, there are people that like were married and then they get divorced and then they become single parents. That's how that works. <laughs> That's how yeah, that works. Yeah, but a person who's never been married means okay. he's never been married. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. Why would you need to take my word for it? Hold on, hold on. If I had been married, wouldn't it somebody have said who she was? No. It might have been a long time ago. No. Uh. I've never not been famous, sir. I, I've just, I just, I just worked the story out to you. That, I don't have no hidden mysteries in my life. That was Jesus. I don't have no periods in my life where it's unaccounted for. No, no, no. That person that said that was a liar. I got a case right now in L.A. This lady said she was my assistant for 14 years and I heard her or something like that. I, Never worked for me not a day in my life. Mm. Liars lie because they want to. But people always say, why would they lie? No. There are several women have said they was married to me. It's just when it went to court, they had to say, I was married to him spiritually. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> How are you going to be married to me? My kids don't know you. Answer me that. Fathom so me that. Problem, do you have a problem bringing women around your kids? No, not then or now. <laughs> I've always lived with several women. Like, okay. I several? Yeah. Like more than one? I've already told you that I prefer the company of women to yeah. the company of men. So if I told you that me and a couple dudes on my staff sometimes have to cohabitate, nobody finds a problem with that. Yeah, so it's me and three ladies cohabitating because that's how the business gets done. Like, I don't want a chef that scratches his nuts for he cooks. I don't. <laughs> like, I, no disrespect to these guys that go around with these large male-only groupings, but that's not my episode of Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. You were, approached, you were approached by seven government. You were robbed, shot in the thigh. Say it again? You were robbed once, correct? No, I never been you robbed. You didn't get robbed. You didn't You didn't get approached by government, tried to get robbed? They didn't take anything. I wasn't even the... I wasn't even... Um, the target? I wasn't even who they were talking to. It, and not because I say that. Because if you look at what time period it is, I'm not even making 5000 a year. So robbing me wasn't an answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is before Oklahoma. If you <laughs> you're talking about a terrible condition. They'd have been disappointed thinking they'd get something off of Elon. If they'd have robbed you. Look, I, in three cities, there it's legendary that Cat Williams would walk down our streets with his baby in a baby stroller, with a diaper bag, with a gun in a diaper bag. The only thing I need is a pass. Don't mess with me and just let me go about my business. I, I'm living in Inglewood, Compton. I'm living in Manchester and Western. I'm in LA, the gang capital of the world, but never robbed, because why? I'm not pretending to be something I'm not. Okay. You think I'm a blood, you think I'm a crip. I'm from Ohio. I'm a comedian. I'm a father. Right. I'm trying to do something out here. And not only do I not judge what you're doing, I'm not trying to be involved. Right. That's the difference. That's where the respect comes from. To you touring right now, Dark Matters, the Dark Matter tour. Yeah. Filming next uh, uh, Netflix special. In May. May. Yeah, next Netflix yeah. special. And, oh, you two theater in Inglewood. I'm about to catch that. Mm. I thought you might say that. I will catch that one. Right, because it's a homecoming for me. Because I lived on, um, I lived on Hazel, so you know. So I got to catch that. know I lived in the heart of Inglewood. They saw me walk down Market Street with the babies I'm raising. Like they understood that. No, no, no. Yeah, I was really not pretend. Oh, you want to be from the hood? No, I'm living there on the street. What's your favorite city to tour in? 
<laughs> the next one, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the real beauty of travel. Right. That's why most people don't have the empathy and the sympathy that they need to have for other people. Mm -hmm. It's because they haven't seen other people. Right. Like if you went to Ireland and you saw what them people was like, and you went to Sweden and saw what them people was like, if you really went to Africa and you really saw what the people was like, you went to Haiti, you went to Puerto Rico, if you really traveled across the country, you would see that all people is the same. Facts. Way more people. That's good. They're than bad. the fucked up individuals you see. And if you understood that, it would change everything. So I don't, I, I I don't have any favorites in the world just because every place is dealing with their own issues, their own troubles. All places look better than they actually are for the people that live there, mm -hmm. and it's always a difference between what it seems like and what it really and is. What it is like. People will tell you, "I went to Paris." I was there at the Eiffel Tower. Then she had bed mugs. <laughs> and there were rats everywhere. The food was terrible. Yeah. Tell the rest of it. Yeah. Don't tell some. Let me ask you a question. When you, go, when you go to these cities to tour, do you make it a habit of getting out? That's how I built my reputation. That's also how I ended up in jail 19 times. <laughs> uh, because when I come to do a show, I'm really in your city. So whatever the strip club is, I'm there. Whatever the top bar is, I was there drinking. Yeah. Whatever the... I was at it. You had a casino? I was at it. Like, what was it? Huh? Because I'm in your city. Right. I'm a, this is how I'm spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. City so that when I do my show, I can be talking about what I know, not what I think. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was what I did in every city that I went to. The first 15 minutes of my show is what it's like to be here. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that was always a part of what kept my legend going to the point where I can still be in these arenas without you ever seeing a poster with my picture on it, without you ever seeing a flyer, without you ever seeing a poster that goes, hey, well, facts, factual information, because I ain't seen a, a flyer, a, a, a post saying that he's still torn. I didn't even know he was going to be in Inglewood in May. What is going on? Who's on the booking calendars for this? How is he spreading the the, the, uh, the information and how is he having sold out dates? How? It's not lining up. I ain't saying he lying, but somebody's doing an interesting job of promoting. It's Cat. Could y'all make sure y'all come out and come see me? Because I'm going to be in. Would you please come on out, guys? I really am. Because we have a different respect. I know I'm coming. They know I'm coming. I Pause. know they going to be there. And they know I'm going to do the best job I can possibly do. And they know beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever hour he was doing when we last saw him, he won't be doing that hour when we see him this time. It's a whole new conversation. Mm -hmm. And because I've never strayed from that, they've never strayed from their part. I'm looking at some of the the, the the actors that you've been on screen with. Cube, Tracy Morgan, Regina Hall, Terrence Howard. These are the, Nick Cannon. I mean, Tiffany. I mean, bro, who who brings out the best in Cat Williams? How, how does someone get the best? I For some reason, I feel like he going to discredit everyone. He's like, none of these people bring out the best in me. I bring out the best in them. I am. I never read a script. I, I, I just feel like he about to do that. Cat William, do you need a comedian? Do you need a serious actor? How do we get the absolute best out of Cat Williams on screen? Well, I would be disingenuous if I didn't remind us that that's never anybody's goal. It's never anybody's goal to create a great situation for me to do a good job what? In, in a script. The way it works is the script is already there. This is a character in the script. If they give me the job, I make it my job that this character here, this character here has to be as big as this whole project. So if you don't even see the movie School Dance, I want you to remember 
whose goddamn white baby is this? <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. only way that I can guarantee that you will remember my scene if you didn't remember a whole movie is if I make sure that my scenes are that good because that's what i watched i watched great actors mm -hmm. you never saw de niro you never saw pesci you never saw any of these dudes and something you was like nah i don't really believe it you sure you're the great gatsby like no <laughs> like you believe you believed it that this dude daniel is a hobbit okay. that's part of the lord of the rings Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And so I, it's a, having a respect for the craft that I'm doing. That means I, I'm trying to do the best job possible. What was it like working with Spike Lee doing Priceless? Uh, Spike Lee is everything that you said I was in my intro. He's just really an innovator and a groundbreaking, one of a kind dynamo. And, um, and I knew that they were <laughs> like they tried to sabotage me even then. Like as soon as I said I wanted to get Spike Lee to direct it because that was the biggest thing I could do, they immediately gave Spike to Gerard Carmichael and had him do his special too at the comedy store and just to undermine. Like, but I, I, <clears throat> if there's one thing you can take away from me as a person, whether you like me or you don't. If you take this from me, you will be a better person. If you decide today that you're going to live every day like it's your last for real. Okay. Which means have a conversation with yourself every night that, okay, that was it. May not be no more after that. And really count yourself every day like this could have been it. All right. Before I go to bed, this could be it. All right. How's that looking? If you can do that, it'll change your life. You really start making decisions and living your life like this. All you got, just this one day. But you could be a winner. You could be, could a, be winner a loser. You could be a lo you could win. Just, the <laughs> crazy thing about it is, you could be a winner. Or you could be a loser. It depends on how you want to take the journey. Do you want to win or do you want to lose? Because if you want to win, you're gonna put your all into it. It's work ethic, and not the work ethic they talk about. They tell you work ethic where they do all these movies. I'm the hardest working man. Well, no, everybody goes to work every day. Yeah, right? facts. Yeah, I'm saying I go to work all the time. Everybody who works goes to work every day. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You get what? You ain't you getting no cookie you for that. Than my gardener? I don't. I don't. He work every day. Rain or shine. I don't know if you saw this, but Taraji P. Henson got extremely emotional the other day. She was giving an interview. Yes. And saying that. They're vastly underpaid and say the math is not mathing. They get X amount of dollars by the time Uncle Sam get his cut, by the time the agency get their cut, and what you see they were supposed to get is a fraction of that. Where, where, where do you come down on that, Cat? Pause. It was the saddest thing ever because imagine, imagine being in your genre, in your sub niche, whatever it is. Imagine being in your lane. Imagine uh -huh. being one of the very top of your lane that to the point where if they don't take you for the role, there's not three black actresses that they can say are bigger than you that yeah. we're going to get this to. Imagine yeah. you being at that point and have to humble yourself and say, they're not paying me, y'all. And they're not making my pay go up because I'm doing better or nothing. It don't matter to them that I'm famous and people know me or nothing. They want to pay me exactly what they paying the new girl. And I've been suffering under it for a, de a decade now and just taking it. I've just been getting whooped. But I just got to come say, this is wrong. <gasps> ah. We should be ashamed. But this is and we ate that shit up, too. We didn't question it. We, we was just like, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's very interesting, like how you've been, how how you, how you been doing something for so long, and a person that ain't ain't got a breakthrough, nothing, just walk in and get the same pay as you. That's crazy. And the fact that you can, they can't even say, "Yo, we are gonna find somebody else that's better than you, or more talented than you, or more famous than you," because you are that person. It's crazy. Do, what, do we say this is like the time we live in? Like, when do we make the change? 
Like when? When do when do we take the chain? Where we don't pay the teachers and then we say the kids is the most important thing. You can't have both of them. If you do that, we're going to end up with a generation that can't read. Guess what? Generation Z and A can't read. Why? Because who was giving them a book? We got an iPad or a phone and now the letters don't they don't. Mean they There's don't no even know. Right. Sorry about that. So yeah. Hey, facts. What what age was you when you when they stopped teaching cursive writing? Because I know a lot of people that don't even know how to write in cursive. But it's crazy. It is no longer a thing no more. It used to be a requirement. Now it's no longer a thing. This is what period of time it's in. It's the period where the victims get to say <clears throat> they've been hurting me for a long time. And I just ain't said nothing because I was trying to be strong and I didn't want to shame anybody. When our people call out for help, we got to understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like we, we, we put too much pressure on Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All of them could walk through the mall without Facts. Security. Facts. Be what you're going to be, but put your people on. If you a gay person and you in there, put some other gay people on. Put somebody on. Or don't be wondering why people keep saying gatekeepers. Because clearly, y'all are keeping these gates. Clearly. Wild and out. How difficult was it for Nick Cannon to get you on? And what, what, was, that, what was that experience like? I've known Nick Cannon since he was a teenager. He had to have his... He, he in the comedy club if you're underage you can't be in the regular club you had to be in the kitchen right so i was the master of the kitchen every comedy place because i got a child and my child is back here in this place while i go on <laughs> yeah. stage right. so i've known nick cannon since he was 14. nick cannon has never called and asked me to do one single thing and i turned him down because i've known him since he was a young black child in hollywood Wow. So um, what I did in Wild and Out was to be his protector and to be his voice um, with hip hop. So the whole thing was the thing that he was trying to do had never been done before. You can't bring six comics in and let six comics talk shit about six rappers because the six rappers will beat the six comics ass. Right. You will have to have a comic that could actually stand in between. <laughs> Mm. And go, look, we comics, we going to say what we going to say. Y'all going to take it and understand it's a joke. If you want to fight, we fight before the show. So you can go out there with your black guy. <laughs> We're not going to do it comedically. Yeah. This is what needed to take place right. in order to be for it to be successful, which is why it had already aired and didn't work. And then suddenly when it comes back with me, it suddenly works. Because respect has to be in there as well. Or if you're trying to do it with Kevin Hart, you and him gonna get run over. You, you, you a teenager. He fine too. Like, mm. what's gonna happen? Who are some of your favorite young comedians? I don't. I haven't seen a young comedian I don't like. If you name any of the young comedians, I'm aware of all of them. That's respect right there. Because most people have been like, I ain't aware of what's going on. All of a sudden, they lose. They, they confuse on what's going on. They ain't, they ain't heard of this person. They ain't heard of that person. They, now, all of a sudden, they lost in the sauce. But the, but the fact that he, he he's willing to um, uplift... These young, these young comedians, it's very interesting. We're all doing a great job. It doesn't matter if it's Country Wayne or Desi Banks. It doesn't matter if it's Carlos or Chico. It doesn't matter if it's uh, DC or Jess Hilarious. It, do, it really doesn't. It really doesn't matter once we go to the young part. Um, the young comedians are dealing with things that we never dealt with. And right. so that gives them more benefits, but it also gives them uh, more chances of failure. So it's not easier for them. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big supporter of um, young comics. We, we have uh, Miss Pretty Ricky and Takara Williams. 
Um, I've taken 25 uh, black women on the road in these tours. Um, it's important to me that the young comic uh, gets the benefits and the advantages yeah. of the big comics platform. Right. Matt Rife, while and out, recently got canceled. You see Jonathan Major, what he went through, Marvel dropped him as soon as the guilty, uh, uh, the conviction came out. And you were telling the Hey, you saw that black woman come get his charge cut in half? Thank you, Megan Good. God bless you coming to save that slave. <laughs> and he had to be there by himself. He was getting awful. Guilty, 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 oh. guilty. She came in there. was just so beautiful. They had to knock half of it off. <laughs> bless his heart. Yo, so, man, right. Factual. Because somehow he broke up with the girl. Somehow he broke up with the girl. All of a sudden, he, he with Megan. He with Megan Good. Like right when the case come out. And then all of a sudden they get married. Somebody's working behind the scenes. They was working overtime. How much did he pay you, Megan? How much did he pay you to get it to get in this fake religion, race relationship? I want to know. I need answers because it doesn't make sense. You know, you know him from uh, Wild and Out. He gets canceled for time. Trying to tell him. I never knew him from Wild and Out. To be honest, okay. I, I I came across him as a new comic. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm really just trying to see the comics, judge where they are, see it. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. So, the, the canceling, uh, the, what, what, what do you think about this cancel culture? You see the situation with Jonathan Major? And y'all think the cancel culture really real? Y'all believe in this council, the council culture? Or is fake? Comment down below, let me know what you think. Hey. If you're rocking with the video, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that. Comment down below right now what you want to see me react to next. Until next time. Ayo!